Uh, first of all, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody, depending on from where you are attending this uh, event. Thank you also for the opportunity to present this uh, work. So I am Vaibhav Shah. Uh, I'm representing here DTX, Digital Transformation Collaboratory. Uh, and me and my colleagues, we have uh, developed this work uh, to, to prepare a recommended system. And the presented work mainly focuses on the challenges and our proposed solution for offline uh, evaluation of recommended system. As uh, uh, you, you are aware, there are uh, different types of recommended systems, but uh, the main challenge is while before you go online, we have to test the system and for that we 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 have proposed some solutions how to do that evaluation more effectively uh, in this presentation so uh, here is the uh, general outline we will see the the project context uh, we will see the proposed recommended system and then we will see the the challenges with the with the traditional metrics our new metrics and some experimental results and also future work that is required so uh, the main motivation for this system is to create a recommender system which can uh, actually present personalized recommendations depending on the, the preferences of each user of, of the viewer because this system is developed for a, a major television uh, service provider and we have considered the real data and this is the uh, our goal to create a system for Sorry, I guess the... Uh, do you see? Yeah. Mm, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, uh, I guess you see. Yes, it, yeah? no, no, okay. Yeah. okay, sorry for the trouble. So um, just a brief, uh, uh, discussion about types of recommended systems. There are major, major two types of recommended systems. Uh, one is the the content-based filtering system, and um, another is collaborative fixed filtering system. In the content-based filtering system, we we actually analyze the user's preferences, and based on those preferences, we present new recommendations uh, to that particular user. In the collaborative filtering, uh, we analyze different users' preferences and we try to find the similar users based on the contents that they watch. And based on that, we, we suggest contents to, to different users. For this uh, uh, particular work, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we are working with real data sets and uh, we have uh, two, actually two data sets to work with. One is content, where all the details about different contents, television, uh, series, movies, et cetera, are stored. And another is users, which, which has all the details about the visualizations of different, by different users. EPG is basically electronic programming guide and VOD, video on demand. For the, for the current uh, work that we are presenting here, we have worked on the VOD uh, data set or VOD types of contents only uh, for the simplification purpose. Uh, for the uh, training and testing, we have actually sp big, split the data sets into two parts. We had actually three months of data. So we have considered 90% of the data uh, between two dates for training and the remaining 10% were used for testing. This is the general architecture of our system. Both the, type, both the data sets are then first pre-processed uh, content aggregation, etc., and then we apply feature engineering. Uh, I would like to hear stress that for this particular work, we have mainly focused on the genre as features. So our main features that we are working that we have highlighted in this work are the content genres. Uh, if the content is uh, comedy, action, drama, etc., and based on that feature, we are creating the user profiles and also the content profiles. And based on the, uh, those profiling, we prepare recommendations for each user and present them. So this is the, the, the simplified uh, architecture of the system. 
This is the system pipeline because the system is already implemented, uh, as I mentioned earlier. First, we do data cleaning. We remove the EPG contents. We just keep the VOD contents. Uh, we aggregate the content to simplify that uh, because there could be many episodes of one particular series. And so for ag aggregation, we just uh, con consider that as one type of content. Uh, we split the data and uh, finally we prepare the recommendations. We will see this, uh, this phase is more detail. Again, uh, here, because uh, this system is offline, that is the recommendations are not actually presented to the users. So we have the ratings of those items or contents calculated automatically. As you can imagine for any recommended system, uh, the ratings of contents uh, are very crucial because that, uh, that information shows what a user likes or does not like. Since we do not have any interaction with the user in this case, we are calculating those ratings automatically, implicitly. Uh, as uh, we do not have any rate explicit rating given, so user does not say if they liked it or not, or how much they liked it, we create, uh, we calculate implicit rating. Uh, it is based mainly on the visualization time. So if the content is one hour long, and if the user sees 30 minutes, uh, we consider it as 50% uh, of uh, rating, for example which I understand this is very crude, but for the, for the simplification purpose, uh, we just consider this. Of course, uh, more sophisticated visual uh, rating uh, calculations are currently being implemented uh, and will be presented in future works. So uh, in this content-based uh, uh, filtering, since our feature is uh, genre, we analyze the genres that a user has liked or watched. And based on that, we try to pr uh, present similar genres. For example, uh, um, content ha has uh, profile in, 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 in terms of genres. It could be comedy, it could be action and adventure, et cetera. We prepare those content uh, profiles in the first phase. Then we create the user profiles. So for example, this user likes uh, comedy more than they like action. Uh, a little bit of terror, drama, etc. So based on this, we create this user profile. And based on this uh, too, we actually match the user profiles with content profiles and then prepare the recommendations based on this profiling. Uh, for this uh, implementation, we have actually uh, created three different types of uh, pre-processing. First, uh, uh, we do not do any aggregations, content aggregations. So each episode is treated as different uh, as a unique content. Uh, we also consider a content popularity in terms of total number of visualizations globally. In the second pre-processing type, we do content aggregation. So all the uh, different episodes are, are clubbed into one content type, but we still consider the popularity by the uh, total number of visualization uh, globally. In the third pre-processing, uh, method, we do content aggregation and also we uh, consider the popularity by unique user, view, uh, user views. So uh, in this way, we actually identify that this particular user liked or, or, or if one user watches uh, three times one particular item, uh, it is considered still just one uh, visualization. On the other side, uh, we have developed uh, three different algorithms. Uh, the, the first two, the company baseline and DTX baseline, these are the uh, basically simple algorithms, which is basically presenting globally popular items to each user. So each user receives the same recommendations, a slight different between, difference between company and DTX baseline. Uh, company is basically default baseline uh, and DTX baseline is that in DTX baseline at, at our um, system, we have applied different uh, Preprocessings that I just mentioned, and then these three uh, types of uh, um, types of recommendation generation systems are are applied. So, for example, in the first, we uh, prepare ten recommendations, giving uh, considering overall top genres for each user. So, for example, if a user likes ten different genres, we uh, uh, give recommendations based on those uh, genres. And each content, each recommendation will have will correspond to one particular genre. In the second um, um, type of recommendations, uh, uh, rec recommendation 
generation, we do just a selection of recommendations from each genre group. So for example, a user gets 10 recommendations uh, and it could be two of each type. And that way it will be just uh, five recommendations, but each genre will have, a different, will have the same weight. In the third uh, methodology, we are actually giving weightage. For, for example, if a user likes um, comedy more than drama, for example, we give more recommendations of comedy than drama. For example, in those 10 recommendations, each genre will not have the same number of recommendations, but may have different number of recommendations. So basically our algorithm evolution is, in, uh, is two dimensional. We apply the different pre-processing methodologies to same recommendation generation system. We'll take a simple example. Uh, imagine a user uh, visualized uh, these particular items. Uh, my apologies, the titles are in Portuguese because uh, the, the visualization data is for Portuguese uh, viewers. Uh, as you can see, different uh, algorithms are applied and we will now try to verify how each of these algorithms uh, corresponded to the prediction. Be I say prediction because again, the, the recommendations are not presented to the users. So as we can see in the, in the first case, the, the client or default baseline, we have um, asserted one content in the second also we have asserted one. As we go further, we have more predictions correctly uh, done. As you can see in the, th in the third, uh, uh, in the second and third content-based filtering, we have uh, asserted more, more contents. So more of whatever the users watched were predicted correctly. Coming to the main uh, topic of our, uh, of, of this work, the evolution metrics. So traditionally, the, uh, the met these are the four metrics to evaluate any machine learning system, precision recall, false positive rate, and accuracy. In, in, in our context, if something or if some content is watched and it was also recommended, uh, we call it true positive and so on. Because since uh, nothing was actually recommended, so we call it pre predicted. So if something was uh, not watched, but it was predicted, we call it false positive. The problem with this uh, uh, metrics is that these measures are not helpful in our case because first there are thousands of possible classes or contents, but only 10 are presented for selection. Second, there are a lot of interesting items that will not be recommended because of limited number of recommendations. And finally, the number of items recommended or predicted are always hugely inferior to the number of items not recommended. So for example, we have thousands of uh, um, TV shows or movies, etc., but only 10 are there to be recommended. You know? So these values will always be very, uh, not very indicative of whether our algorithm works or not. And also added challenge, it's offline. So. Uh, so here is the, the problem, as I just mentioned, uh, the precision and recall will always be very low because uh, very few recommendations uh, or recommended contents will be watched. Of course, uh, no user in normal case will watch all the 10 recommendations. So even if they like one of the recommendations from our 10 recommendations, we should consider it as a success. But in terms of precision, it will be very low all the time. Recall also very low. Uh, accuracy will be very high always because there will be so many contents that were not recommended and that will not be watched because there are thousands of movies. So it will be always very high. So this is the main problem with the traditional metrics. And to, we have, in this work, we have tried to uh, create new metrics, which uh, would allow us to measure the performance of our, of our uh, system, even in offline without actually presenting anything and still uh, be able to, to verify whether it works or not or how well it works. So just to, to, to take a brief example, uh, imagine uh, a user, if, if there is a catalog of, ten, of, of 100 items, a user has watched 15 items, as you can see, item one to 15, these are all the watched items. The, the recommender system gave actually 10 recommendations. Uh, out of these 10 recommendations, four of them, the user actually saw, again, these were not recommended. Uh, actually, these are just predictions. So what we can see is that uh, there are 
not recommended and not what was items are 79 because um, there are many items that are not recommended and there are many items that uh, that are not watched so considering this the precision uh, the recall accuracy and typicality these are the the values these are just examples in reality it does not happen like this so this is just indi indicative examples uh, and now we will show the the values of our proposed uh, matrix. So which are the proposed metrics? First of all, uh, to overcome these uh, biases, we have uh, three uh, major, um, three main uh, metrics proposed. First, user hit ratio, how many users watched at least one content as predicted. Genre hit ratio, how many contents viewed were from the genres predicted, why? Because genre is our main uh, features so uh, it is important to measure how well our feature selection happened and typically how well the the recommended con uh, contents that were already viewed how well they were liked by the user since we do not have any interaction with the with the users we in in the offline setup we consider it we calculate this by the visualization quality so basically how how for how long uh, the user watched the content so how many use, uh, users did watch at least one content as predicted? Imagine there are three users and uh, they were given these 10 recommendations each. So for example, this particular user, the, the first one, uh, the user liked one, the user watched one, uh, one of the recommendations as predicted. The second user did not watch anything as predicted. The third one watched two as predicted. So at least one, it means we have two out of three users that watched at least one content as predicted. And it helps in the offline, especially in the offline scenario. Uh, the second uh, evaluation matrix, genre hit ratio. So imagine if we predicted that this particular user likes two uh, different types of genres, drama and animation. Uh, so out of five items that were watched by the user, one had this genre that was predicted, that is drama. So this is, this is our ratio. Uh, of uh, predicting the genre correctly. And uh, in terms of uh, the likings of the user, imagine uh, the, the user watched uh, out of, of the five items that were recommended and watched by the user. Uh, one was particularly uh, liked by the user. This we calculate through this uh, um, metric, TP quality, true positive mean quality. Okay, so again, this, example just to just an indicative example to explain the metrics okay so uh, this slide presents this slide presents results of our two dimensional experiments the difference between default baseline and dtx baseline is that in the dtx baseline we have applied the pre-processing techniques uh, on the upper left uh, looking at the precision values it is evident that the values are very low as well as the difference in values are, are, are very low. So as you can see, it is difficult to distinguish between the different experiments. On the other three graphs, the performance uh, performances of our three proposed evaluation metrics are seen. For example, in the genre hit ratio, uh, the genre hit ratio fluctuates between 67% to more than 95% for different experiments. It means that we could predict the user's genre preferences fairly accurately. And this is very crucial when in the offline scenario. In, the, in most of the metrics, the DTX baselines showed very high results because the globally popular items are still more watched. Uh, this is one of the challenges in offline evaluation system. Uh, this is one table which it shows all the values and just a global view. Here we have uh, a global view of all the values. We have not put the baseline values in this table because we are interested in personalized recommendations as mentioned earlier. And as we will see in the next slide, the globally popular items are still very highly popular. This is the bias. So these are the challenges that we would like to overcome, but this is also to, to highlight a bias. For example, imagine uh, since we do not actually present anything, this is an offline system. So we have the other factors that are influencing the user, their, their friends, uh, the social network, and they recommend uh, certain items which the user would like to see uh, instead of watching something that we would like to recommend because there was nothing recommended, there is a wall. There was nothing recommended actually to the users. Another uh, 
challenge or problem is that the content duration. Imagine if the, the, the content is two hours long uh, and if the user is, is watching it for two hours or, or, or one and a half hours, we do not actually know if the user actually watched during all this period or it was just uh, uh, pausing. And another, another very interesting case that we found is that uh, in splitting the data, we had this bias because for a certain period, one particular content was very popular, but when we were testing it, the, the content was already not available. So it was uh, not, not seen by the user. So these, these are a few of the challenges. Uh, just concluding my, my, uh, my presentation, we, in this work, we presented new metrics we tried to overcome some of the challenges of offline testing. New metrics are pres uh, still planned for other uh, aspects such as novelty and diversity because right now we just considered the genre. Uh, currently we are implementing collaborative filtering system and hybrid filtering system. Uh, and also we are considering sliding window approach for training. Uh, I conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. And if there are any questions or comments.